So I study how nutrients and energy cycle through ecosystems. What I'm trying to do with that information is trying to better understand how that works in coastal tropical ecosystems so we can better manage them for fisheries. In places like Haiti, there are fewer fish now than there were 30 years ago. And so they're really interested in options for it, right? What are the ways that we can get more fish to feed my family and you know, put clothes on my kids' backs? This research is important because people are hungry. It's just really that simple. At a relatively early age, I decided I wanted to do something that would hopefully be useful in some capacity for the world. Over the course of my life, I've traveled a lot and I spent a lot of time in Latin America and South America and the Amazon and just recognize that there's a, a need for sort of conservation action. I see a lot of hope. To me, fish represent a, a clear potential success story in all this you know, bad news stuff, especially in the tropics. Tropical, coastal, marine systems, they're super productive systems, but they don't have a lot of nutrients, and that's why the water's so clear. My research has shown that fishes provide among the largest sources of nutrients through their excretion. So what we're trying to do in my lab is like harness that in a, what we consider a sustainable way in the sense that the fish, are they're peeing no matter what. If we can focus that pee somewhere, then that becomes this fertilizer. We build these artificial reefs with cinder blocks and through the use of these artificial reefs, we can create this structure that aggregates fish in a seagrass bed. And so if we can just like sort of artificially stimulate that, then they recycle those nutrients at this faster rate that, that jacks up productivity around that artificial reef. And then that, we think, we have evidence that suggests that goes up the food web and actually makes more fish. In these places in Haiti where there's just not very many fish, these reefs have more fish on them than I'd say any fisher younger than 30 has ever seen in their entire life. And that blew my mind. Like you put it in, you come back later on, you're like, whoa. Like, okay, it's like that system wants to respond. In Haiti, we've probably worked with 50 different fishers and hired 20 different boats to do the work we've done. We want to work with them at 100%. And we don't, I don't make any decisions to do anything without them first, right? That's why we have community meetings with local fishers and say, hey, can we do this? So the goal is to be able literally to build a model that we can say, all right, if we, we have a seagrass bed and we want to build you know, nine reefs here and nine reefs here, and we fish these and we don't fish these, in 10 years, what's the net amount of, of mass that those two reefs, series of reefs will create? How many families can we feed with it? The cool thing about the artificial reef stuff that we're doing is that it's super cheap and it's not very hard. I think there is the potential for us to be able to scale this up to like the entire country of Haiti. Right? I think that that's actually possible. If I could just do it on the island that I work on and it would put more food on the people's tables and you know, get, get the kids school bucks, then that would be amazing, right? So I mean, the, that, my aspirations are, are, are that across a, a series of scales. I would say I do what I do because, I mean, I love it. It's something that I truly love to do, and I like to get up every day to do it. And I think that there's a chance that it actually is a beneficial thing for the world.